TCPIP, putting it all together. Welcome to module 7 and in this module we're going to be taking everything that we've learned over our past several modules and we're going to put it together end to end to, to kind of review of exactly how TCPIP works across our network. Now I've created two different um, two different scenarios or two different examples uh, one is I'm calling just driving around town and that's what that's what our local network is is like and how our local network traffic behaves the second is going cross-country and that's where we actually leave our neighborhood and we pack up the moving van and we and we head across cross country to our new destination that's where we're we're destined for remote networks somewhere somewhere along the way so with local network traffic we never hit a router whereas with cross country traffic we are going to hit a router our remote network traffic will hit a router because it leaves our local network segment so here's a sample network that we're going to play with and we'll, we'll start with following our our little packet across our local network only so what we have here is a uh, two local computers two little computers on our local segment and our router and what we're going to do is we're going to ping 10.1.1.20 and if we see 10.1.1.20 is on our local segment. So let's bro blow this up just a little bit more and kind of zoom in to what we're looking at. One of the first things a computer does when it's trying to reach a destination is it's going to compare his local IP address to the destin IP, destination IP address that he's trying to reach. So when we open up our command prompt and we type ping 10.1.1.20 the first thing our net here let's let's matter of fact let's write this up here 10.1.1.20 so the first thing our our local computer is going to do is he's going to compare our, our his uh, local IP address to the destin IP, destination IP address that he's trying to reach now we're making some assumptions that the local network mask is 255.255.255.0 so this computer is going to look at the first three octets to see if it compare how it compares to the destination the first three destination octets so basically it's going to look at the first octet and see that the first octet is the same as the destination the source and destination are the same it moves to the second octet and it sees that this the source and destination are the same then it moves to the third octet and sees that the third octet source and destination are the same so he knows now that the first three octets are both the same so he knows that it's his local network so the next thing our local computer does when he's trying to find out where his destination is is he does an ARP he ARPs out ARP. and remember from our previous module what an ARP is it's like standing in a room full of people and just shouting out someone's name you're doing a broadcast you are just hey 10.1.1.20 where are you and that packet goes down across our network down through our switch and there could be, you know, there could be other hosts. There could be other hosts hanging off of our, off of our switch or our hub, and they're all going to get it. This guy will get it here. This computer here may get it. This computer here may get it. Our router will even get that ARP request. But since it's not, since they're not 10.1.1.20, they'll ignore it. They'll just dump the, the packet. They'll ignore the packet until it gets to this guy here. When he sees the ARP. For 10.1.1.20, he, he wakes up and he says, hey, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm 10.1.1.20. So what he does then is he turns around and instead of a broadcast like computer A did, here, let's put a label up here, computer A and computer B. So 
What computer A did was did a broadcast out, and ARP is a broadcast, address resolution protocol. He broadcast it out to find find out who 10.1.1.20 is. 10.1.1.20 then gets that broadcast, sees it coming from computer A, and does a direct response, a unicast reply, a direct reply, back to computer A. And in that reply, he's going to say, I'm 10.1.1.20 and here's my here's my MAC address. My MAC address is 0015F29BC725. So then computer A says, ah, oh, awesome. Okay, great. Hey, I have a ping packet for you. And then he replies directly now. Computer A will now reply directly to computer B to his MAC address. So now it becomes a MAC to Mac communication and we saw that remember in our last module or two modules ago sorry when we were looking at how IP addresses and Mac addresses um, relate to each other so that's all great but now we move into we're moving away from just communicating over our local network now we want to ping something that's on our remote network so now we're going to go long distance and we'll start off the same way only now we're going to ping 192.168.1.10 which is over here way across across the country so to speak uh, and we want to hit this server so what's going to happen is this computer A again let's write it up computer A we're going to do a ping to 192 dot one six eight dot one dot ten and again the local computer is going to look at the first address first octet compare it to his first local first octet of his local address and immediately he's going to stop right there he's going to see oh man this is not the same this is on a remote network so immediately what what computer A is going to do is he's going to do an ARP, but he's not going to ARP for the destination IP. He's going to ARP for his gateway. And the gateway that we're assuming here is 10.1.1.5, which is this guy here. So he's going to do an ARP for his gateway. And then his, the local router right here is going to reply back. He's going to reply back with his MAC address. And so now what happens is is computer A now has a so with a ping we don't really have necessarily a source port and destination port though we we could if it was say a port uh, say if it was a web request and we're going to port 80 over here then our destination port would be port 80 but here now we have a a source IP which is our computer A a destination IP which is our server over here and our remote location. We have our source MAC address, which is computer A's MAC address, and then we have our destination MAC address, which for right now is the, the gateway. And the gateway's MAC address will go in here in the destination MAC field of our packet. And our ping payload, our payload is just going to be a ping packet that's that we're going to get across. Okay, we're going to move as as that's what our payload we're going to be shipping across in our in our semi truck going cross country. So um, so now that computer A has the destination MAC address, he forwards that ICMP packet over to over to router A. So now let's blow up our, our network and as router A, as that ping packet comes into router A, oh here, let's 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 label our routers too while we're at it. So now we have router A, B, C. And if you remember back a couple of modules ago when we we're talking TCP IP and how it relates to MAC addresses, so now the destination, the source MAC was our computer A, destination MAC was router A. But now when router A gets that packet, he's going to keep the source IP address. He's going to keep that source IP address. We're going to keep the destination IP address because we don't want to lose our way. We want to know, we want to remember that 
the source IP was computer A over here and the destination IP is the server way over there but the source MAC address now when when router A gets it the, the router is going to he's going to he's going to rip off that that source MAC address and he's going to rip off the destination MAC address and he's going to put his own MAC address as the source now and then what router A is going to do is router A is going to do an ARP out and he's going to do an ARP for router B now I need to stop right here and I need to clarify one thing now address resolution protocol and Mac uh, Mac addresses are are an Ethernet thing so when we're talking about Mac addresses and ARPing out we're we're really talking about about Ethernet networks um, if this were say you had a router A and a router B and this was some other layer 2 protocol um, we wouldn't have a MAC address we would have some other layer 2 uh, identifier but for now we're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna keep it just at Ethernet and we're gonna pretend that our our network all the way is is Ethernet all the way so with that said when we we get back to um, router A here router A now has that ICMP packet and he ARPs out for router B and router B replies router B replies with his MAC address so now router A puts that MAC address in the destination field and forwards that ICMP packet down to router B now router B has the ICMP packet still with the original source IP of computer A and the destination of 192.168.1.10 where we're wanting to go but now router B grabs that packet and again he rips off the source MAC address and he rips off the destination MAC address he puts his own MAC address as the source and he does another again he ARPs out for router C router C replies with his MAC address router B puts it on the destination MAC address forwards that packet up to router C and so on and now I'm, I'm gonna save you you kinda get the the point here but again when router C gets this he'll rip off the destination source MAC, source and destination MAC addresses ARP out again for router D now this time and they do that all along the way until they finally get to the the final router here which would be router D router D gets that ICMP packet coming in and it still has the source IP of computer A way across country of the 10.1.1.10 but we still have a destination IP of 192.168.1.10 and router 10 gets that packet and he says hey hey whoa hold on here 192.168.1.10 hey I know that guy oh he yeah it's my neighborhood he's right down the street so then what he does is he does an ARP out router D then does an ARP out again for the MAC address of the server he get the server responds with his MAC address the router D strips off the source and destination put his puts his own so this is D's source MAC address and the destination MAC address now is of the server and then the packet finally gets to the server and the server receives re finally the server receives that ICMP packet and goes oh it's a ping oh great yeah I'm here <laughs> big news it's a nice it's a ping packet so then what he does is then he turns around and then he he replies back to that ICMP packet but what's what's really amazing if you think about it um, where are we let's go back let's go back all the way to here if you think about what just happened just for an ICMP packet just for a ping packet all the things that needed to happen as we 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 stripped off the source and destination MAC address here at router A and we did the same thing at router B and at router C and at router D all along the way every step of the way as that ICMP packet traversed went cross country over through Ohio and down to Dallas and over to Las Vegas and finally out to California and then finally made it 
out to our our server out here at the at the other end and it all happens in less than a second that is what I consider and that's what I think is just really truly amazing is how fast all of this behaves and how quickly you can get a packet from <laughs> New York to Los Angeles <laughs> in 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 less than a second it's just truly truly incredible that all that happens so the next time you're you're out <laughs> you're out on the internet and you're you bring up a web page and it's slow to load um, you know there's a whole lot going on for for us to go from point A to point B especially for our remote networks so what we learned today well we looked at our local network traffic and we saw how we were putting all that together and we saw how how uh, our local computer would behave and our local network traffic behaves when it sees that there's a a packet that's on the same network it doesn't hit its gateway doesn't bother with the gateway but it goes directly to the local segment it still does a broadcast and that was one thing I did I, I failed to mention was again what is when it does the broadcast let me go way back here so when when router a when we're just doing our local traffic and he did our broadcast it's that broadcast stops right here router a didn't forward that broadcast and that's what routers do they they don't they block broadcast. They don't forward bro broadcasts, and that's that's a key point to to keep in mind. So on our local segment, when we're talking about our local traffic, it never hits the router. It does a broadcast, and the router keeps that broadcast there in the network because he knows that it's for the local network. Computer A now knows it's for the local network. Now, when you go across country, we compare our local address to the destination address and we know what's on our local network because of our subnet mask. Our subnet mask lets us know what the network portion is, our local network portion is of our IP address. We see that it's not on our local segment so then we forward it to our gateway address, our router. Our router gets it, strips off the source and destination MAC, we keep the source and destination IP address and forward it all the way along the way across country. It's amazing what happens in such a, a, a blink of an eye, what's going on with our network. I hope this has been informative for you. I hope you have a great day. I look forward to, to talking with you in our next module, Module 8. And if you have any questions, as always, please visit our forums, routerfreak.com slash forum. Ask questions out there, and I'll be more than happy to answer any and all questions that you have. Hope you have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.